Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker, and I have a very different crochet design to share with you today. We're going to be working on face masks. Hi, you all know the situation with the coronavirus, and I won't belabor that point. But as you all know, there is a shortage of masks in this country right now, and actually worldwide. And I thought it would be really fun and hopefully functional to design something that's very easy to make, very comfortable to wear. And if you get some time, you can even design something a little more whimsical and fun to wear. Okay? Well, today I'm going to show you. Let me just show you a little bit how this works. It's actually made out of two layers. And inside, I put a piece of a cotton, 100% cotton t-shirt that my son let me use and cut up. And this is made of most... Well, most of you crocheters or knitters would have the materials like this in your home. Now you may say, I'm not a crocheter. Well, you know what? I'm a crochet teacher and this would be a great time to start. Many of us have extra time on our hands with the social distancing that is now going on. And it's a wonderful skill that brings release of anxiety to our attention once you get past the learning curve, I'll add. But anyway, a great time to sit and learn a new skill. Well, let me also just say, as a disclaimer, these are made out of household items. These are not professionally made, and they are not certified by the FDA, CDC, or anybody, any, any official organization. But compared to what's available to me as an individual now, which is absolutely nothing, this is a great tool, which when, when worn, Oh, also, let me show you something. I have a little paper clip right here that helps to, to um, adjust this over the nose. And when I do that, it keeps my glasses from fogging up. Because masks do tend, do tend to do that quite a bit. One excellent benefit of wearing one of these when you go out into public right now is that it keeps you aware of not touching your face, which we do anywhere from, I think it was 25 to more times every hour without even thinking about it, which is a wonderful way to transfer the virus. So by having this on while you're in public, while you're at the grocery store and touching all these things that may be contaminated, it's a way to just know that you keep your hands away from your face. Um, the openings where the virus can transfer. Okay, well again, I just want to state up from the beginning that this is not a guarantee of not catching the virus. I don't want anybody saying that I'm making that claim. I'm not. But provided, you know, comparing this to absolutely nothing, this is really something. And by lining it again with the, the cotton, um, it does add even more um, layers for things to have to go through. I'm going to also provide some links below in the video description of where I got some of these ideas from. And there's actually a link to a site which explains how different materials used as filters, um, it, it shows their, their effectiveness in a scientific chart. So if that's something that you're interested in, please do take a look at that. I will say up right up front, there are better materials, more airproof than the cotton t-shirt that I showed you, but if air cannot pass through them readily, they become very uncomfortable and um, ha have a tendency for people to just take them off. So you want something that's going to be comfortable in order for it to be effective. It needs to be worn. The sample that I'm going to show you is very simple and a very, very neutral color, but feel free to dig into your stash Find your fun colors that you want, especially if you're making these for um, a child. You know, make them into a superhero somehow or, you know, have fun with the little thing here. I'm going to post extra links also in my video description for how to make a pair of lips. I'm going to refer to other YouTubers who are much better at this than I am. And um, also take a look at the other possibilities by, by looking through some of the YouTube videos. Well, let's go ahead and I'll show you how you can make this. For this yarn, I'm gonna be using Lion Brown's Kobu yarn. This is a natural fiber yarn. It is a DK or a lightweight yarn. 
Um, this is made up of 50% cotton, 50% rayon from bamboo. These are very breathable natural fibers. As an alternative, if you have any of this on hand, or I can put a link below where you can order some, it's Eco Cotton by Nutrient Fibers. This is the one, the yarn that I made my first sample out of. And this is 100% cotton. Both of these, again, are DK weight um, on the thinner side. Um, if you don't have either of these yarns, perhaps you have the worsted weight cotton, which could also work fine. It's just gonna be slightly heavier when you're finished. Um, let me show you what else you're gonna need. You're going to need a size F or 3.75 millimeter crochet hook. There's the information right there. Now, if you don't have an F and you wanna use a size G hook, um, maybe the G hook would work better if you're using a thicker yarn. Um, but either of these, you don't have to run out and buy this size. You can use this if you need. I am also recommending that you have a yarn needle for hiding loose ends, which there are going to be several. And you're going to need a pair of scissors. I'm also recommending that you have a simple cotton t-shirt. A, a cotton undershirt works very well. My son cheerfully donated one of his for this demonstration. And as you can see with the t-shirt, you can make many, many, many filters out of one shirt. And you can even use an old shirt that's no longer in service. If you would like your face mask to have more of a fit around the nose bridge, this is particularly helpful if you regularly wear eyeglasses. It helps to keep the air from going up into the glasses and fogging them. You're going to need just a paper clip and I'll show you how to bend that into place and put it safely in there. We're going to start with a slip knot just like that and we're going to chain 31 okay now we're going to begin in the fourth chain from hook one two three four we're just going to slip our hook in there we're going to work what I like to call a waddle stitch which is a single crochet chain one and a double crochet worked in that same space. After that, we're going to skip the next two stitches, one, two, and in the next space, we're going to work another waddle stitch, which is a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And this is what we're going to work all the way across the row. Skip two, one, two, and then single crochet in that next stitch, chain one, and a double crochet worked in the same space. So go ahead and work that all the way across. At the end of the row, just work a single crochet in that last stitch, just like that. Let's take a look at what we have. And this yarn feels really nice and soft too. It's going to be really nice up against the face. Okay, now we're going to turn. We're going to chain two, one, two. Now, the way we work these waddle stitches, we're only going to work in the chain one space. We're not going to work in the top of the double crochet or the single crochet, but only in that chain one space of each waddle stitch. So in that chain one space, we work a single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. In the next chain space, single crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. I also wanted to make mention of one thing. If, if I am going too fast for you, you can actually slow me down and let me show you how. There should be a, in this corner for right-handed, in this corner for left-handed videos, there's a little icon that looks like a little sprocket. Or, and if you click on that, it'll bring up a menu that will um, offer an opportunity to change the speed and you can just change the speed playback speed to whatever you would like if you're using a cell phone it'll be up in this upper hand corner it'll be three dots that are vertical or in the left hand it'll be on the other side if you click on that you can actually change the playback speed of this video or any of the videos on YouTube I hope that helps you so for this row 
and for several others we're just going to work in that chain one space single crochet chain one and a double crochet so go ahead and work that across and I'll show you how to work the last stitch after working this all the way across we're going to find where that initial chain three was when we worked our first row and we're going to work just a single crochet at the end of the row just like that yeah. after that last stitch we're going to turn and we're going to begin row three chain two and we're going to work in that chain one space just like we've been doing single crochet chain one double crochet and what we're doing here on row number three we're going to repeat 11 times total so this would be the first repeat and after you finish this row you'll do this 10 more times so we're just working in that chain one space working the single crochet chain one double crochet so go ahead and work that across and I will show you how the row ends. At the end of row three, we find the chain two space, which is right there. And we work a single crochet. So go ahead and repeat this row 10 more times. At the end of 13 rows, this is what you should have. And I'm gonna go ahead and measure it for you so that you know approximately the dimensions. Okay, I'm getting four inches tall by, okay, by about five inches wide, maybe five and an eighth. It's five inches, we'll just go with that. Um, so it is gonna be a little bit wider, but that is where you should be right about now. Um, if you're a quarter of an inch, or so off here or there it really shouldn't matter for this project and also we're going to expect this to stretch a bit so that it can stay on now we're going to chain one and we're going to work a round of single crochet so starting in the chain one space go ahead and work two single crochets there and then one in that next single crochet of that waddle stitch so let's do that again two single crochets in that chain one space and then one in the single crochet two in that chain one space and then one in the single crochet so go ahead and work that across the row after working this all the way across we're going to turn our work 90 degrees chain three and then we're going to work a single crochet in the same place is the last single crochet thereby forming a nice corner for which to join the um, the strands that are going to help hold this on later on now we're going to just work one single crochet at the row end of each row so we worked one over that single crochet and then one in that chain two space one in the next single crochet and one in the next chain space and so on. I'm just going to go ahead and work this row with you because I think working along the row ends is probably one of the trickier things especially for beginning crocheters. Okay and here we go and then work one in that last space there with the chain Let's see how many we have. So counting the first one that we worked, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, one for each row. Now we're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and we're gonna work a single crochet in that same place where we just worked. Now we have another corner formed right there. Now we're gonna work a single crochet this is the same part of the chain opposite of where we crocheted the waddle stitches on row one. And then we're gonna crochet two stitches in that chain two space. One, or rather two single crochets rather. And then one in the next space. And then two in the next space. One, two. And that's the repeat that we're gonna work across the bottom one single crochet and then two 
single crochet. So go ahead and work that across to the next corner. After working that all the way across, we are going to chain three, one, two, three. Now instead of working the next single crochet in this space, we're going to work it in the end of the first row, which is right here. Okay, we have one there and we're going to work one in the next row end. And notice that I am actually crocheting over this strand, um, but by doing so I'm going to be hiding that nicely underneath these stitches as I go. It will be one less strand to hide with that yarn needle once we finish this up. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this with you all the way along the row ends because this can be fairly tricky. Let's go over that strand. I may have to trim that a little bit later and I can certainly do that. Okay, so now we've worked that stitch. Let's double check to make sure we have 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I love it when the math works out on these things. Now we're going to chain 3. 1, 2, 3, and we're going to join with a slip stitch in that first stitch just like that. So that we should have this chain 3 corner on all sides of the mask. Okay, now we're going to give this another chain, give it a nice tug, and we're going to cut the yarn just like that and pull it on through. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to hide that strand, but this is what you should have right now. Now let me show you how to hide this loose thread using your yarn needle. I'm going to go ahead and thread that in there. And I'm going to turn this to this side just so that, see this is the front side of the single crochet. I'm going to turn it towards the back side. And I'm going to bring the yarn back here. And I'm going to run it underneath. I hope you can see that. Run it underneath these strands. It really, it really doesn't matter too much since the yarn is the same color. I think it's going to be well hidden whether you hide it on the front side or the back, but I'm just used to hiding all these just by habit, I guess, on, on the back side so that it doesn't show. We pull that through. All right. Give it a kind of pull back on it. And then you're going to want to trim this close, but not too close. Okay, that's, that's very well hidden. Um, so now I'm going to give you an assignment. I want you to go back to the beginning if you need to. Um, this does start with a chain 31 and then making the first waddle stitch in the fourth chain from the hook in case that helps some of you. If you need stitch by stitch support, look along the bottom. I'll put a time mark there where you can go back and I want you to do another one of these except only work to about this point. You're going to work 11 rows and not 13. And let me explain why. Once you get that second piece, we are going to um, add it. Actually, we're going to stitch it to this one. And it's going to form a little pocket. Now, inside that pocket, you'll be able to put a piece of cotton. My son is giving me one of his 100% cotton t-shirts. Is this 100%? Yes, it is. Thank you, dear. And um, you can cut, you know, a few layers of this and fit it or, or even take a long strip and fold it and put it inside the mask for extra, fil extra filtration. Okay, now I, I just want to emphasize one more time that this is not um, a, up to the standards of the CDC. This will not filter 100% of anything. This, again, is not a medical um, mask. It is not going to save you from all the bad things out there or, or many of them, but it is something. It is better than nothing. Um, I looked online and I did see information where 
when you're using t-shirts, it can filter quite a bit. And I'm going to include a link in the, the uh, video description below that has the information of the materials that you can use as a homemade filter. And it has the percentages of um, their effectiveness. So this is far better than nothing for sure. And also with using a t-shirt, you can take the filter out regularly and actually put the whole thing in the laundry. Uh, I would wash it with perhaps hot water and you can reuse it as many times as you need. So go ahead and make the other section, but only crochet 11 rows. This is what you should have after crocheting only 11 rows. This is a part two. This is the part that goes on the inside of the mask. Now we're going to do our perimeter with the single crochets, just like we did on the larger section. We're going to chain one and then just work sing single crochet, two single crochets in that chain one space, and then one in the next single crochet two in that chain one space and then one in that single crochet. So go ahead and work that across to the corner. After crocheting all the way across, turn 90 degrees, chain three, one, two, three, single crochet in that same stitch. And then we're going to work one in each row end across. Now, because we have fewer rows, we should only have 11 stitches going across the row ends. I'll go ahead and work this with you. Again, if this is too fast, you can always slow me down with that little icon uh, gear like section. Okay, let's see how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we're on track. And then one more. Now Eleven. I'm gonna turn ninety degrees chain three and now working across the bottom go ahead and work that first stitch in that section right there and then two single crochets in the next section and then one and then two so go ahead and work that all the way across the bottom after working those stitches across the bottom. We're going to chain three, one, two, three, turn, and now we're going to work along the row ends. And again, I'm going to work over, over that loose strand. And we're going to work one single crochet per row, and we should have 11 stitches across this side once we finish. Okay. Looks like that row or this strand is a little on the long side, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a trim just like we did along the other one. Okay, here we go. And continue on. Let's see how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 and one more, 11. That worked out. Now we're gonna chain three, one, two, three. And by the way, if the stitches are off by one, it really isn't gonna be a deal breaker with this. Um, but it would be good if they're in line. All right, so go ahead and give that a chain after you join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet. And now we're ready to, to trim this again. Pull it on through. Now we're ready to put these two pieces together. And what I'm going to recommend is that you just have the front side here facing. Really doesn't matter, but I'm just going to try to be as precise as I can. So this is going to be the front side of this. So this is the part that's going to be shown. Let's go ahead and flip it to the back side. And this is the part that's going to be shown on the inside. And this piece definitely it does not matter which side you have up here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert the hook into that chain three space. And now I'm going to insert this into the, okay, I'm going to look at the stitches here. This is the, this is the chain three space right here. Not the next stitch, 
but the next stitch. Go ahead and insert it into that space just like that. Okay, now I'm going to make my slip knot. Give it a nice tug there. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull this all the way through. I'm going to give it a chain. There we go. And this is how we're going to do the slip knots or the slip stitches into the next stitch and to the next stitch. You see that? And we're going to go slip, stitch. We're going to do that again to the next stitch and the next stitch. We're putting both of these pieces together, slip, stitch, and then do that again. Slip, stitch. And hopefully these stitches will line up. I'm going to work my way all the way down to the first corner. Make sure you go through all of the strands. When you're working with cotton, that's a common, common affliction sometimes because of the different strands. They can sometimes get a little splitty on you. The beauty of the cotton that we're using here and, and most cotton that is sold, um, even the, you know, the worsted weight dishy kind of cotton is it's very breathable, all natural fibers. And that's, that's what you're going to want. If you're going to have to wear this mask for a prolonged time, you're going to want to make sure you've got really breathable material. Now that said, you can use acrylic, but it's just going to be much, much hotter on your face. Okay. Now here we want to let me show this, show this to you again. I've put it in the chain three, in the chain three. We're going to pull it through like that. And even by going around in this way, these chain threes are still going to be, well, they're still going to be very easy to thread um, our strands through that are going to tie this thing on. So now we go to the next stitch. So notice we just did one slip stitch into this section. Let me, let me show you. So these, these chain threes are right there. So we're going to be using that in just a minute. All right. So get the hook out and I'm just going to do this all the way around the perimeter of the mask. So go ahead and line up these stitches as you go around. And when you get to the corner, these stitches have, you have the same number, so that should line up. Um, go ahead again and just one slip stitch in this corner. Actually, I'll go ahead and work that corner with you. So go ahead and go across lining up and working these slip stitches. And do notice that I am going through both loops of each stitch. Okay, so go ahead and finish that. Once you get to the corner, go ahead and put the hook in both of those chain three spaces and then do the slip stitch turn and we are going to work along this edge and when I get to this point I'm going to fasten off because we do need to leave this side open don't forget to leave this pouch open so that we can insert a little filter in there after working this all the way across that third side I'm going to work the last stitch and the slip stitch and in that next stitch do a slip stitch go ahead and give it a chain give it a tug and we're going to clip a generous strand so that we can hide this with our yarn needle once again so go ahead and get your yarn needle and let's go ahead and hide that loose strand um, let's go ahead and just I'm going to work it actually under under these stitches just like so. This again is on the back side of the mask so nobody's going to see. Not that it really matters if they do. Alright. Go ahead and pull that through. And give it a little tug. And let's trim it nice and carefully. Make sure we don't trim the finger there. And so now we have 
both. I have one more strand to hide. I'll deal with that in just a second. So now we have the mask done. Now all we have to do is make the strands. So now for the strands, I'm going to start by going into the two chain three corners. This is at the bottom of the mask. Notice that the top is up here because this is the opening. And I'm going to make a little slip knot and pull this through. Let's go ahead and get that extra strand out of the way. I'm going to chain one and kind of pull it tight. Now I'm going to chain a chain that is approximately 16 inches long. Okay, now the number of chains that it takes for that may vary depending on your crocheting style. So go ahead and crochet a chain until it is approximately 16 inches long. After confirming the measurement using a tape measure, when you do this, make sure that you're not stretching the yarn excessively. Okay, you just want it to be, you know, just kind of normal about like this taut. You don't want to pull it real tight. Um, you want to have a little bit of flexibility in it because um, that'll help to have some give. Now, do know that the nature of cotton is to stretch out over time, so you don't want to make this too long either. Okay, I have measured my chain and it is approximately 16 inches. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the strand, pull it through, give it a little tug. Now I will say a word about, about this. Um, don't make it longer than you think you need because cotton over time does tend to stretch a little bit, although this is not going to stretch much. So if anything, you're going to want this a little bit tight so that it stays on the face. Okay, and that's easy to fit over the ears. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to pull this through like this. Just make, you don't have to worry about it being twisted. Just, just don't make, make sure it's not twisted too much as you bring this together. And let's go ahead and pull this through. So you see, I, I wove one end through the top. So this, this can be a little bit adjustable. And I pulled this one through. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tie this very carefully onto the bottom. I'll get as close to that knot as you can. Okay. So anyway, after tying that, I'm going to go ahead and do it one more time to make sure that the knot is secure. Okay. So now all I need to do is get my little yarn needle out and hide these again. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to do the exact same thing that I did here on this other side. So if you need to, you can just back the video up and see how I did this. Just remember that you're making a chain of 16 inches long. In order to do this, I'm using the sharp, sharpest pair of scissors I have. I'm just going to cut this shirt tail off because I think that's going to be just a little too too thick to use for our mask. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut that off. Now I'm going to cut strips that are approximately three inches wide to insert in. So I'm going to just cut them. Let me just show you three inches wide. Okay, I've cut a three inch wide this way. And this is about nine inches long. And it's, it's actually actually doubled. I, I cut the shirt just right where it was in half. So technically, I guess you could say this is 18 inches long, but it's, you know, the front and the back of a t-shirt cut together. And if we fold that just one time, I believe that's going to be big enough to just slip into the pocket here. Now, if you wanted to make this thicker and add another one, you certainly can, depending on how thick you want to make make this section. You can just slip it in there, and it is actually 
ready to wear. Now there's one more thing that you can do to make your mask more functional, especially if you wear glasses a lot. Um, we are going to add, show you how to add the little paper clip. Now the first thing I'm going to do, it's a little bit of a trial and error kind of a procedure here. I'm going to straighten out the paper clip so that it is straight. Now do be careful on how you do this. If you do it too quickly, um, a lot of times the metal can't handle it and it can actually snap. So we're going to start by just making it as straight as possible. Okay, that's, let me show you, it's hard to see. There you go, that's, that's straight enough for our purposes here. Now with the back side facing, and I'm going to go ahead and take out this padding just for a second. And this is the back side. So we're going to put our paper clip up here and just kind of measure. Okay, so I need to start by going under this stitch and I'm just going to run this under, under the stitches just like this. We want to make sure this doesn't show on the front, although I think it's going to be well hidden no matter what we do. Okay, so and hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Make sure it's not showing from the front. Good, it's not. It's almost like hiding a loose strand like we did with the yarn needle. It's just that we're using uh, using this thing instead, the paper clip. Okay, I think that's going to be enough. Let's see. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm using my finger to know where each end is. Okay, so that's about there. All right, so but the uh, goal here is to make sure that it's kind of in the center. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do, you don't want this sharp end here digging into your flesh. So let's go ahead. I'm using my nail to kind of hold it still so I can bend this. Okay, now we're going to try to bend this. On. I'm going to try to use the scissors here. See if this will help. All right, that kind of works. All right, there we go. So I've bent that inward. There we go. Because we don't want that to dig into our noses, do we? And now on the other side, go ahead and let's do that on this side. I'm going to bend it about, I would say like a quarter of an inch. All right, I'm going to bend that, hopefully not. Gonna use my scissors to bend it a little bit further. I really need a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, but I am actually working away from home during these during this time, so I don't have all the tools available that I would like to have. Okay, so I've pushed that in enough, and so I've pushed that part in. And now we're going to just bend it so that it would fit the bridge of the nose. And because this, this paper clip is very flexible, you can work with it pretty much to fit any, any nose shape. So that, my friends, is our face mask. For those of you who would like to make your mask a little more whimsical with some uh, fun uh, alternate mouth shapes and I've seen online others have video tutorials which I'm going to list in the video link below um, how to do a mustache and just really fun fun silly things um, I think all in an effort to encourage one another to keep the atmosphere cheerful even in the midst of a difficult time this would also be a really fun for children especially if you're trying to encourage them to wear a mask and it's a difficult thing for them or even children who are recovering from illness i know there are many out there who are in that situation um, and by making it a lot more fun i think it might be something that will make it be worn more often well anyway let's go ahead and i will show you what this looks like 
Let me show you how you wear these. They go simply over the face and over each of the ears. Stays on very comfortably. I hope you enjoyed making these masks with me today. I know that we all look forward to the day when such things are no longer necessary. And let's pray together that that day comes very soon. If you enjoyed this, please give me the thumbs up. And if you could subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you hit that notification bell, you won't miss any of the new offerings that I have coming your way. God bless. Bye-bye.